In today's video, we're going to be comparing two smaller breeds that have big personalities, the Boston Terrier and the Jack Russell Terrier. Both breeds were developed in the 1800s and have changed little since then. So we're going to look at how they differ and which could be the better choice for your home. Welcome back to the Boston Terrier channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Hattie. I'm a certified canine leader here at Fenrir, canineleaders.com, and this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Boston Terrier, and then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise the perfect Boston Terrier. So if you're a lifelong Boston lover, thinking about getting one, or you've just started your journey with your new Boston Terrier, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss a future Boston Terrier video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll find out all the differences and similarities between these two small breeds that command big places in our hearts. We'll dig into the history of each breed first to get a sense of their original working role and how it affects the breed today. Jumping right in, the Boston Terrier was initially a bit larger than we know today and were bred to participate in the blood sports of the 19th century. Luckily, that trend quickly went away and the breed found success as a rat in factories and as a companion. Almost all Bostons can trace their lines back to a bulkier ancestor named Judge who was brought to the town of Boston, Massachusetts Massachusetts in the United States when the breed was refined and really developed. Also developed in the 19th century, the Jack Russell, officially the Parson Russell Terrier, was bred to work with larger foxhounds hunting foxes in the south of England. They were fearless in their pursuit and would dive into holes after foxes, who were quite clever and vicious when cornered, to flush them out to the larger waiting foxhounds. The man responsible for the breed was Reverend John, the sporting parson, Russell, but the first breed club wasn't founded until 1904 by Arthur Hindman. In that time, Jack Russell was a term used to describe many similar types of dogs and still holds as the breed's household name today. The two breeds are similar in size and have short coats, but that's about all they have in common when it comes to looks. Bostons are 10 to 25 pounds and have stocky builds with short tails and large, erect, bat-like ears. Their fur is short and sleek and they are considered brachycephalic, so grunting and snorting noises along with snoring are very common with this breed. The Boston always has a tuxedo type pattern of white and darker colouring that ranges from seal, a very dark brown that appears black, and black with white. The Jack Russell, on the other hand, is mostly white with patches of tan, brown or seal and is a slim but very sturdy build. They usually weigh between 13 to 17 pounds and stand 13 to 14 inches tall. Many have a moustache-like muzzle, where their fur is a bit thicker and stands out on their nose. They're natural diggers, so be prepared to clean them often, and they'll need plenty of exercise in all types of weather to keep that messy tendency at bay. Bostons are easily trainable and can make a good canine for first-time owners. They don't care to do much at a competitive level, but they do make excellent emotional support and companion dogs. One thing to watch out for is that they are cute and they know it. They will do whatever they need to get more treats and can be prone to obesity because of it. While the Jack Russell is loving and affectionate, they are also very independent thinkers and they're not afraid of anything. Harsh corrections from their leader can lead them to correcting you right back. They do best with a patient leader who is creative and high energy when training and a consistent boundary enforcer the rest of the time. They're most definitely not an excellent choice for first time or inexperienced canine leaders. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behaviour cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. The Boston has held the nickname the American Gentleman since its early development in the States. This is partly due to the tuxedo markings but mostly because of their charming and polite personality. They are deeply devoted to their family and they're an endless entertainment source with their frequent clownish antics and playful nature. The Jack Russell is a force of nature in a tiny package. They are intelligent, bold and as I've mentioned independent. They love to cuddle and play with their family after they've burned through their massive energy. They were a great high energy playmate and they are incredibly fast so training them to fetch is a great way to structure their playtime. They are devoted family companions and tend to bond equally with everyone in the home. Both of these small breeds are terrific choices in the right homes. The Jack Russell thrives in highly active homes and calm consistent leadership. Bustons are an excellent choice for less active homes or even older people since they're very low maintenance and all round charming little characters around their family. Bustons also make a great choice for first time canine leaders since they're effortless to train and they're 
smaller size keeps feeding costs down. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if so make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comment section below and don't forget that if you're new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Boston Terrier videos coming here every week so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Boston Terrier channel.